I swear nothing. No, what do you mean nothing? I promise you. That's a bloody lie. You can't tell me what happened. No, no, no. I, um, Dear, what do you think bad. happened? What do you think happened? Nothing. What do you mean by nothing? What do you think happened? Hear me? Yeah. Nothing. That's a bloody lie. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Bro, kissing another man. Yes. Hmm. Kissing men. No. Not even men. Not even Yes. Men. Mm -hmm. And that was how, just like Yemi Craig's, I joined the waiting list or the waiting game. I joined Yemi in the waiting to hear the matter Kosi wanted to discuss. I was waiting, just as Yemi was waiting. I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that joined Yemi in waiting. We were all waiting. Mm -hmm. And then Kayode decided to give us headache by going on an ad break. And then we all went crazy for a moment on Twitter. Then we came back again to sanity when the ad break was over. And then we kept on waiting. We realized that, oh, nothing had been said. We continued waiting, waiting, waiting. We even took water breaks. We came back, we were waiting. And then it dawned on me that, hold up a second, Glory. <laughs> Kosi is actually just, like, she's literally creating a long string and stringing everybody along like a goat. We've all been waiting like a goat. <laughs> I'm not talking about the capital letters, G O A T, greatest of them all. No, I'm talking about a woo goat. She's been stringing all of us along. Like, it was a perfect gaslighting situation. Kosi actually had nothing, absolutely nothing to say. But that, because I had to look at that situation, and you know, it occurred to me that this is not the first time Kosi is doing this. Last night was just the extreme. This is not the first time. So this is how it works with Kosi. It's a pattern now. Whenever she needs Yemi's attention, whenever she wants to really play mind games with Yemi, whenever she really wants to stress Yemi, the way Yemi has been stressing her back, this is what she does. So that means like clearly there's nothing happening. So then we, we can move on. Like Now she knows Yemi's flaws. Yemi has a lot of flaws, just as all the housemates have flaws. But now she knows that this one thing is the one thing that Yemi cannot stand. When she comes to Yemi and tells Yemi, oh, a lot of people are saying that, without putting a name to the people that are saying, Yemi goes gaga, Yemi goes crazy. Instantly he begins to probe. He wants to know the people, the person that said it. And he's, he's already hyrated. He's already gone in for a fight. Who said it? Who is that? Show me the person. Tell me the person. No, 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 babe. No, no, no. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight. I just want to tell me. Yemi is already having hypertension over matters like that. The reason why I, I want to know what this is about is because I want to know why anyone would think anything. I want to know the origin. I want to understand what the, why people would think whatever it is that is going on. So that I want to know what it is. So she now knows that that is how to get Yemi overworked up. And that was exactly what she did last night. And we all fell for it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I survived. I don't know how you did, but hallelujah, I survived. I'm going to give you the details about it, all right? So please make sure you watch to the end of this video. Oh, and there's also another conversation in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, when I mentioned on my video yesterday that the whole house is in an open relationship, I wasn't kidding at all. So it seems as though these entanglements now is now creating some weird level of animosity and rivalry between most of the ladies and Kosi, who is completely oblivious to their beef. So we're gonna, I'm going to share with you guys all of those details, right? And because I do not want this video to be too lengthy, I might break this video into two, all right? So please brace yourselves, all right? And please make sure you watch this video to the end. And also, as usual, I encourage you all to please go ahead and share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. And yes, you especially welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory, and I am the girl with the T. To all of you new subscribers, 
returning subscribers, returning viewers. Thank you so much for choosing to join this tribe, for choosing to return to click on this video to watch. Guys, please do not forget, today is Saturday. 3 p.m. WAT is our FSWG Saturday YouTube live stream. Please make sure you come through. Keep the date with us. There's a lot to discuss. There's a lot to unpack. I cannot wait to interact with all of you. That said, let's continue with the details of this conversation. So last night was more like a barbecue night for the housemates. Big Brother had allowed them to use the grill. It was a fun night. Big Brother gave them alcohol, gave them drinks, you know. It was just basically a very, very beautiful evening for the rest of the housemates. And it was looking as though there was not going to be any drama. Yeah, everything was going easy peasy. And in my head, I was suspecting at that point in time that, hmm, this one that there's no drama yet. I'm very sure that Yemi and Kosi will start thinking of something crazy to do. And I was not wrong. I wasn't wrong at all. Because one minute, the housemates were singing their traditional African songs. They were dancing. They were really having songs. They were having a bonding moment. They were playing games. It was all fun and vibes. And the next minute, boom, Kosi was dragging Yemi into the dressing area. <laughs> God, guys and that was where she she started gaslighting this guy she was just a usual manner a usual style oh yes i i heard this i heard that yemi became overly overly worked up what exactly is the thing ladies and gentlemen we waited till was it 3 a.m in the morning or was it 2 a.m we waited because he did not say jack <laughs> fam if frustration was a person <laughs> that was yemi last night Yemi was frustrated. He was, he was tired. He was exhausted. But that's the problem with Yemi. He doesn't really know how to let go of matters. This guy still held on. He wanted to know. He wanted to know. The not knowing, the being in the dark was what was eating him up, was what was killing him at that point in time. And Kosi could recognize that. And so she rode on it. She rode on it. And her face was so serious, like... I don't want to tell you because what's the point? What's the point? I don't want to tell you. Like, tell him already. Tell him. But she refused to tell him. And Yemi became a motivational preacher. <laughs> this guy gave Kosi one million and one reasons why she needed to tell him. He even went as far as saying that, oh, imagine if I was the one now that, that heard things and then I decided not to tell you. How would you feel? How would you? I said, yeah, story, story. <laughs> Story, story. Now, whilst all of that was going on between both of them, most of the other housemates too, they continued in their fun. But Nana, um, Blue Ava, and Yvonne had a lot to say about Kosi. Because for them, they felt like, okay, what does this girl possess that she feels is big enough or important enough to want to control all the men in the house? That was a problem, especially for Nana. Yes. And so Nana decided to start riling up these ladies, you know, saying a lot of trashy things about Kosi. And let's not forget the relationship that exists between Nana and Kosi. Yes, we can all say that the show is just only three weeks in, right? And so we cannot um, categorically qualify Kosi and Nana as best of friends. No, they are not best of friends, but we all saw how the show started. Kosi was the only person that offered Nana an open arms, right? She was the only person that actually gave Nana a shoulder to lean on when the rest of the house saw Nana as nothing. And Nana felt she had found her place in the house. Just when she felt she had become more comfortable to explore, you know, her sexuality, her love interest in the house, she realized that, okay, she just might be in a very dirty competition, which she knows she's never going to win with Kosi. Why? Because the two guys that she's kind of attracted to in the house are friends with Kosi. One of those guys is deeply invested in the friendship he has with Kosi. I'm referring to Black Boy and Tabang now, right? So Tabang's friendship runs deeper than your regular platonic friendship. Nana is suspecting that, oh, it could be that Kosi, after having Yemi wrapped around her fingers in quote, and after having Miracle wrapped around her fingers in quote, oh, she's going after Tabang now, the only available guy in the house that she would have, you know, latched onto. And then there's Black Boy, oh, Kosi is talking to Black Boy as well. So now at the moment, Nana is feeling betrayed by her friend Kosi. She's feeling 
like Kosi wants to have it all to herself. Kosi does not like to share. So that is a problem for her. That is a bone of contention with Kosi. And so she stopped vibing with Kosi. Kosi noticed it and decided to give her space. But then yesterday, earlier, before in the evening, in the afternoon, she went and had a conversation with Yemi to complain to Yemi that, oh, Nana, um, Kosi does not talk to her anymore. Kosi does not even say hello to her or even hi to her in the house. And then, guys, this whole thing is dirty. So, Kosi explained that, well, nobody would say that they did not see how she was the one really carrying their friendship on her shoulders. In the bathroom, she would say hi to Nana, I want to talk to Nana. But Nana's reluctance to respond was always very glaring. It always made it seem as though she was the one forcing herself on Nana and she did not like it. So she decided, okay, you know what, let me stop being the first person to always say hi or initiate a conversation and see if she's going to want to carry on that, that, that boarding. And guess what? Nana too did not reciprocate the energy. And so she decided, okay, fine, it's not worth it at the end of the day. Let me move. Let me move. And that was exactly what she did. And guys, I could really understand where that negativity is coming from because let's all remember, Nana is constantly gossiping about Kosi to um, a gossip gang, right? And it's like every time most of the conversations they have in that group revolves around Kosi and a love interest in the house. So I, I, I can really understand how uncomfortable it might get for Nana, you know, the person you just gossiped about. And she's always the one that says the most negative things about Kosi, right? So the person you just gossiped about in the house is really nice to you. The guilt of it all. But guys... That's not the end of the gist. I'm going to have to make another video to tell you more about this triangle, this entanglement that is actually causing this unseen beef between Nana and Kosi. Yes, because I call it unseen or, un or imaginary beef because Kosi does not even know, like she doesn't really care. She doesn't really acknowledge it because she's actually living her life in that house. Nana, on the other hand, is angry. She's bitter. She's like the woman scorned. So there's a lot... I'm going to be telling you all on my next video. But in the meantime, please go ahead and let me know what you think about this Kosi's method, you know, of gaslighting, manipulating, and stressing out EME. Do you think EME deserves it? Or do you think Kosi is overdoing it now? Because this is not the first time. This is not the second time. Do you think she's overdoing it? Or are you bored already? Or are you excited? Do you want to see more of that? Please go ahead and share in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on another video soon. Have an amazing day. Bye.